I thought I'd do an example where um, we have a shape and we change the width of the on time and the height of that shape so that the area is always one um, so that we can see kind of what happens when a you can have the same shape but depending on the the ratio of the shapes widths things can start to act like a delta function all right so for this example uh, g of t is just going to be a rectangle function uh, one unit long and one unit high and we can see that over here and the transfer function will be 2 divided by a ut minus 2 divided by a squared rt plus 2 divided by a squared rt minus a. And what you get here is this triangle that no matter what a is, the area is always 1. And I wanted to do for when a equals 2, 1, and 1 half. And even before I get started, I'm just going to try to roughly sketch everything. So when A equals 2, right, that triangle is 2 units long and 1 unit high. And you can see that the rectangle has the same height and half the width. And we can see that it'll be no overlap, so it'll be 0 then the area will be increasing, right? But um, it'll be some linear times, I mean, a linear times a constant. So that's some kind of squared change, all right? Um, and then at some point, they won't be overlapping anymore and the area will go to zero. So basically... Um, I'll start off at zero, I'll go up to some value, then start coming down until I come down to zero. So I've been doing this a few times, so of course my rough sketch is pretty good, right? Then the other one is where when A or the delay is one, right? So I go from zero to one, and now I'm the same width as the uh, rectangle, but I'm twice the height. And so when it overlaps, this area of 1, and this will be an area of 1, will give me a maximum of 1. And the T on time will be this width and this width added together. And I should say, this width of 1 and this width of 2 would be, I'm on for 3. Right? And so I would get this kind of shape. Right? Again, this is just some kind of rough non-linear thing that I'm drawing because um, I know I'm going to have some kind of t squared relationship. Now I have a equal to one half. The delay is a half, right? So the width is a half. Now notice it's four times the height of the rectangle, but it's one fourth the width. So the length will be one plus one half and I'm going to get some kind of exponential-ish type thing. And then there's this region where it, the area won't change, so it'll flatten, and then it'll come back down to zero. Now, what if the uh, this was, the delay was 1 divided by 100, right? So if A was a hundredth, right, then this would be, 2 divided by 100th or 200. So this shape would be 200, which I would, you know, come off the page. I couldn't draw it. And it would be so thin compared to 1. So the area would still be 1, right? But um, the time on is so much smaller than the than the than this signal that effectively, and I'll just kind of try to draw it, that would look like a delta function. And it, you know, I kind of just, okay. Now, of course, um, I did draw, a, what's wrong with that is that if this is infinitely thin, then it'll only be on for one second. So it'll kind of come up like this. 
and kind of come down like that. And so it'll look almost like the original object. Okay. So now, you know, that's a big lesson right there is that when one width is much, much smaller than the other width, it can behave like a delta function. So let's just go into more detail. Um, so we have the same convolution we want to do, um, but I, I need to now come up with equations. And really, I have some step functions times a step function times a ramp. So in fact, there's two common functions, step convolved with step and step convolved with ramp. So really, I'm going to have things, the final function will have ramps and ramp squared divided by 2. So if I scale and delay all that, Right, and I'm not going to read every line here. You get something that, yes, is quite complicated, um, even when doing it simply. And then what these slides, and they're actually in the notes I provide if you just want to look at them. I'm actually going through and calculating what the curve should be in each area. So I'm actually calculating what will happen at 0, which will be 0. What will happen at time equals 1, turns out to be 3 quarters. What happens at time equals 2, that's a quarter. And what happens at time equals 3, which is 0, which is practically by inspection. But if you're going through this, um, basically the lesson is, is that this one is just really hard and that if you were to be on an interview, You'd probably want to just do this intuitive graphical way that I'm expressing, and you might just not get the the shape here, right? But that that actually would be okay. Oops. So now then. I actually, so from 0 to 1, right, I'm actually getting, um, t minus t squared divided by 4. That's this part. And it'll keep going, right? But then it gets counterbalanced by the things that turn on at time equals 1, and the equation turns into this which is actually linear, but it'll keep going. So then at uh, time equals 2, other things turn on, and the equation becomes this, And it, but that'll keep going up. And then at time equals 3, the equation becomes 0. When everything is activated, it all cancels out, right? So... Um, That's pretty good. Now that I've done that, though, I can kind of really speed it up, right? Because I've proven uh, I know what the equation is. I can plot it. But now, so now when I set a equal to one, I just jump right in. There's my final equation, and there's some simplifying, right? And it turns out because the widths are the same, there's kind of less points to deal with. And so really, we have things happening at 0, 1, and 2, right? And I just kind of draw this shape where I have 1. And I just calculate, what is this function at 1? I just calculate it. It turned out to be 1. I know it'll be 0. So I'm just drawing this curvy shape, right? Because, and, if this, and if I had asked this on an exam, right, as long as you started at zero and ended at zero and went up to a value and came down, that would be a pretty good plot because this took me a significant amount of time, right? But for things like exponential decay, you have to be much more accurate, all right? Now, Again, I go through, and by now I know it so well, right, that this width is 1, this width is a quarter, 
there's going to be this time where it's the area is increasing then because this is wider than this shape there'll be this time where it flattens out and then as this shape starts to leave it comes back down so i didn't even bother writing the equation for this i just drew coming up coming down and yeah i know these areas are one right that's how i designed it so that during that maximum overlap spot it's just area times area area of this times area of that it turns out to be one and then yeah you could excuse me check uh you know with another program but really there'll be a time at zero a quarter one and five quarters and that's just a rough uh, rough plot right um if it were a lab report or you know some kind of technical part yeah then you would go in python and uh plot it out right but the fact um, that you did this rough sketch will make sure that you program your things correctly. Um, it's like a checking of work. And in fact, part of the reason why this problem took me so long to do is I had set up the triangle wrong and I was checking whether my functions went back to zero and went to where I wanted, thought they should go, and it wasn't. And it turned out, um, when I changed to A, things weren't working. So um, it was the actual, these rough sketches that kept me on track to know that I needed to fix something. Um, but again, this is a very complicated thing. It, the, the big point is seeing how um, when one shape gets really much thinner than another shape, how you start to get the original shape back. Right. Because remember, um, anything involved with a delta function is the thing.